Hello and welcome to another timeless video. Today we're playing a deck that's actually built around this one interaction that happened in a brawl game not too long ago. I cast Reanimate on my Villas. Reanimate makes us lose life equal to the reanimated creature's mana value. Villas, an 8 mana 8 8 flyer, says whenever we lose life, draw that many cards. So if you reanimate your own Villas, you lose 8 life and immediately draw 8 cards, which can be incredibly powerful. If you can then also start casting spells for free out of your hand, like Grief, which you can evoke to strip away cards from the opponent's hand and then your 8-8 can usually take over. So that's the main interaction we're kind of working with and to make sure we can put Villas in our own graveyard we are playing four copies of Collective Brutality which we can escalate discarding a card so we can potentially discard two cards to choose all three modes. The first one taking a look at the opponent's hand taking away an instant or sorcery card so we can maybe take away removal spells, counter spells or discard spells before we set up our reanimation plan. Then we can give a creature minus two minus two until end of turn so it gives us some more removal and then we can also drain the opponent for two gaining two life so that can make up for the life loss from reanimate and then since I wanted to keep the deck mono black, another way to discard our own villas is with Thoughtseize. So it's not the prettiest play, but you're technically allowed to target yourself with Thoughtseize. You have to reveal your hand to the opponent, and then a villas can go to the graveyard, which we can then uh, reanimate hopefully in the same turn. So that's our game plan. And then plan B in this deck is the Necrodominance plus Shieldred package. Although honestly, this probably comes up more than reanimating villas. So Necrodominance skips our draw step at the beginning of our end step we can pay any amount of life if we do draw that many cards hand size is now five and if a creature or token would be put into a graveyard from anywhere exile it instead so necrodominance kind of counteracts our reanimation plan unless we already had a villas in the graveyard to begin with since now if we discard it it's going to get exiled but uh, necrodominance remains a very powerful card draw engine especially if you can get a shield root in play because now whenever we draw a card we gain two life so we can basically draw as many cards as we have life minus one and then uh, we essentially double our life total in addition to drawing a ton of cards and then the opponent also gets drained for two whenever they draw a card so they can't necessarily do the same and then the one ring another powerful card especially alongside shieldred and then uh, we have grief which we can also reanimate as early as turn one double griefing the opponent basically which can uh, strip away a lot of their cards and can also lead to some quick victories and then dark ritual another powerful timeless staple which can potentially set up a turn two shield root or a turn one necro which can also be very fun or even dark ritual thought sees yourself or brutality to discard villas and then reanimate so we can technically bring villas back on turn one if we get an extremely powerful hand and then March of Wretched Sorrow, another great way to recoup some of the life loss from Necrodominance and from the One Ring, so we can start pitching black cards from our hand, maybe even before we have to discard to hand size, because with the Necrodominance out, our maximum hand size is 5, so we're better off pitching a bunch of black spells to March of Wretched Sorrow and gaining a bunch of life back, as opposed to just discarding them to hand size end of turn. And then we also get to play with our one-off Demonic Tutor, which is restricted and timeless to maybe help assemble some of these combos. And then we also have the full set of Fatal Push to deal with early creatures, especially important against Orcish Bowmasters, because the Bowmasters will punish us when we draw cards with Necrodominance or the One Ring. And even more importantly, if we have a Villas on the battlefield and our opponent plays a Bowmasters, they can damage us, which in turn makes us lose life drawing cards with Villas, which once again triggers the Bowmasters. So that's an infinite loop where the opponent just burns us out with the Bowmasters, or we end up drawing our entire deck and there's nothing we can do to stop it. So yeah, don't uh, play Villas into an Orcish Bowmasters would be my suggestion. And then a 20 basic swamps means we could also play cards like Winter Moon to punish opposing non-basics, but mostly so we have all our lands entering untapped. Could also play fetch lands just to enable revolt on fatal push and maybe thin out the deck a little bit, but I also don't want to lose life unnecessarily when we need our life total for reanimate, necrodominance and the one ring. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a hand with a lot of hand disruption. And uh, yeah, we can reanimate Grief as well. I'll try it. If we draw Villas, that would be ideal, because then we can discard it and easily reanimate it. Opponent's got her own Thoughtseize. Probably going for a reanimate here is my guess. Yep. So that's going to make our reanimation plan a little harder. But we can return the favor. And see Fury, Fable, Lightning Bolt. So take Fable... Fury doesn't really bother me at the moment. 
And we can take Bolt with a Collective Brutality. But we can also just wait. All right, we drew Villas. Now, the problem with discarding Villas is if our opponent draws their own Reanimate, then they can go off. So I think I just hang on to Collective Brutality for now and pass. And then, I mean, I could Thought Seize the Fury, but I'm not really in a hurry. Could be bad if our opponent finds one of their uh, Feign Death effects to then bring it back, because it is a pretty fast clock. So maybe it's still worth it to Thought Seize the Fury here, since we have Collective Brutality as a discard outlet for Villas. Could also Dark Ritual out Grief, but if I draw a Shieldred or a Wandering, that's going to be a little bit better, I think. So yeah, just going to be patient. Hope to draw another Reanimate, pretty much. Opponents got their own Thought Seize. Drawing Necrodominance would also be great, since we're not under any pressure. Opponent takes the Ritual. And another Grief the draw. So again, just going to pass. Opponent cycling the Troll. And getting to Surveil. Next turn with a land we could cast Grief at least, but then they would just bolt it in response. Right, opponent's gonna cast their Grief. Probably going for Collective Brutality at this point. Yep. But now if I draw lands, I can take away the Lightning Bolt. Drew another Collective Brutality. So maybe now is my window to escalate this, take out their Grief, and then we can take their Lightning Bolts as opposed to anything else. And then I'll discard Villas and just hope they don't top deck a Reanimate before we do. Opponent had another Fury in hand, so we can take that away if we cast Grief next turn. All right, there we go, reanimate. And we have a fatal push in case our opponent's got a Bowmasters. So we should have it covered. And draw eight cards. Opponent does have the Bowmasters, in fact. But we can just fatal push in response. And then we still have Grief. Could have also started by griefing the opponent to just check if the coast was clear. But then they probably would have played Bowmasters in response. Alright, and then I can Demonic Tutor for stuff, but I will be tapped out. So there's no way for me to, like, get another removal spell in case they top deck Bowmasters. At least not right now. And then I can Grief their Fury. And then just hope they don't top deck Bowmasters for one turn, and then we should be in the clear. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gigantha, which likely means energy. And yeah, our hand's got potential. The plan would probably be to Ritual Shieldred on two, and then turn three Necrodominance to draw a bunch, with Thought Seize to maybe take away an answer to Shieldred. So I could Thought Seize turn one. And then Discharge could be an answer to Shieldred, especially in combination with Flage. Although that's still a couple turns off. Amped Raptor provides energy for Discharge at the very least. And can provide more value. So I'm leaning Raptor over. Probably the Galvanic Discharge would be my second pick. But if they top deck another Discharge, they could potentially take out my turn to Shieldred. Which would be a shame. Lightning Bolt Discharge, yeah, so it's too bad. It was definitely a close call between Discharge and Raptor, but at least now we're not under too much pressure, so we can just leverage Necrodominance to still hopefully find a replacement Shieldred. And then I want to make sure I draw something impactful. We have two lands in hand, so maybe draw six here. At the very least have a One Ring. Opponent casting Flage, puts us to 9. Still won't be able to bring it back next turn. So, what are we interested in? 
The goal is to find another Shieldred, pretty much. The One Ring doesn't accomplish much right now, since there's no creatures damaging me. Opponent's not getting back Flage, or are they with Arid Mesa? Five lands. They would need one more. If I grief them, I actually help them in escaping Flage, so that's not the best plan. Could also just pass, keep up March, and draw a bunch more. Or I can just play the One Ring to have it out, which is also an option. Yeah, sure, let's just play the One Ring. And then... I can still draw. Now the problem is there's no creature in play to target with March, so I have to be careful in the face of a burn spell at instant speed. But I would like to find another Shieldred, so maybe I draw uh, five cards here, go to four, and then I'm not dead to a bolt at least. Did not find Shieldred, no Dark Ritual to ramp out Villas either. Discard three cards. Well, I guess we can reanimate Shieldred, so that still works if we gain enough life first with Brutality. So, something like this could have maybe kept an extra spell over a Swamp, just to have more black spells to set up March. Guide of Souls is fine. And a Johnny. Alright, so... I think it's reasonable to draw with a One Ring now. So next turn I can draw two once I reanimate Shieldred, although let's see. Yeah, Collect a Brutality after I lose one puts me back to five. So then reanimate puts me to one. And then activating Ring will gain me four life. So I think that's fine. Alright, so we need to play Collective Brutality. Can go take out a Jani. And drain for two. Discard a Swamp. And then now I can reanimate Shieldred. Activate One Ring. And now taking out Guide of Souls is also tempting. Still have to watch out for Flage, of course. Uh, escaping and dealing three more damage. But, uh, yeah, we should be in decent shape. Do I Ritual? And then I can Collective Brutality. Take out a creature, Drain for two, take out Guide of Souls. And then we'll still have March in hand. And then now, after gaining a bunch more life, I can leverage Shieldred with Necrodominance, drawing, let's say, six cards here gaining 12 life, we're in the clear in terms of Flage, and then uh, Shieldred plus the One Ring can take over. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's just missing Villas to discard it and then reanimate it, but we also have the Necrodominance plan, so... Hand's definitely got potential. Facing Swamp Thoughtseize. Usually going for reanimate, could also see them take the Necrodominance. But reanimate is gone. So turn one we can thought seize. And then I don't expect to grief them as well here, but maybe. Alright, so fatal push, drown, grief. So drown is a card I could maybe take with collective brutality. Fatal push we don't really care about unless they can enable revolt. So I think for now take the grief makes sense. Otherwise, they can grief me, take Necrodominance. And then next turn, we can just Brutality, take Instant or Sorcery to hopefully clear a path for Necrodominance. Ooh, Nethergoif. Okay, that uh, does present a pretty fast clock. Opponent knew we were drawing Brutality from the Bobble. Well, cannot take out the Nethergoif, but we can still do this. And then take instant or sorcery. Don't think we're draining. At least not yet. Double fatal push, drown. This also grows a nethergoif, but had to do it to be able to set up our necrodominance more reliably. Although I guess we didn't have a ton of cards in graveyard yet, so there's a chance drown wouldn't have worked. And yeah, there we see psychic frog. So pretty good when they can discard the useless Fatal Push and still grow the frog. 
So now we're under quite a bit of pressure. If we try and take out a frog, they can grow it in response. If I grief them, they can also grow the frog in response. So frog is also just good against discard spells. And now if we try and play Necrodominance, we're gonna be uh, limited in how many cards we can draw since our opponent's applying a lot of pressure. But I think Necrodominance is still the play since I don't have anything else going on. And then if our opponent discards Fatal Push, they hit me for seven. So I cannot draw seven cards, but I could draw six cards, which is maybe necessary. And then what am I hoping to find? If I find Shieldred, I still won't have the life to draw a lot of cards afterwards. There's no Villas in Graveyard to set up, so I'm mostly hoping to draw like a March to take out their creatures and gain life back and kind of outgrind them that way. Drawing my own Fatal Push would be good. But Fatal Push and March I can still cast at instant speed, so maybe I don't have to draw too many cards right now and instead can save the bulk for next turn. Still gonna draw like two or three, because if I draw one ring or shield root, those would still be useful. Right, drew a fatal push, so that at least answers one of their two creatures. Opponent did not grow the psychic frog yet, but they can do so now. And discarding a land also grows nether goif. So yeah, all of a sudden they're attacking for nine. And I do not have the right answers in hand to beat them. So I need to draw off Necrodominance. So yeah, let's say I Fatal Push the Nethergoif. Collective Brutality draining for two. That allows me to draw three cards with Necrodominance end of turn, hoping to draw another Fatal Push or maybe Black March can still save me. Although at this point, maybe Psychic Frog's a bigger threat over Nethergoif since they can still grow this with a card in hand. So it kind of amounts to the same. And then I suppose I could also Brutality first, draining and checking out if the coast is clear in case they drew a counterspell. But I might need to shrink down their creature in order to finish it off with a march. So I'll still try this first. Discard land, keep the black card to pitch to a march. And we pretty much lose if they have anything of relevance. So now I'll push the frog. And then draw three of Necrodominance and hope to find something I can cast. Dark Ritual, but I can no longer cast uh, Shield here since we're in the end step. So yeah, sadly, we're dead. Still a close game. And we found one of these effects a little sooner. We might have been able to go off. But uh, yeah, another goif, pretty cool card. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we've got some removal, grief, and then try and cast Shieldred. No companion from our opponent. So yeah, kind of an unclear choice against combo. This hand only has the one discard spell. I'll still try it. If we draw Necrodominance, that would be great with Shieldred. Opponents got their own Thoughtseize. And yeah, a lot of matchups we can expect some discard spells back and forth. So mulliganing always feels painful when the opponent starts with Thoughtseize. So sometimes it's better to keep a hand that's maybe a little slow, but at least has multiple things going for it, as opposed to the perfect starting hand that falls apart to one discard spell. So now reanimate, could take grief back. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Before our opponent does the same. And yeah, they did have reanimate as well as fury, ragavan, molten collapse. So strong hand, don't need to focus on ragavan because we have double fatal push. So maybe go for molten collapse. Don't want them reanimating fury. And molten collapse answers shieldred, whereas fury does not. But now if they find their own discard spell for Shieldred, they can reanimate it, which would be bad. Our opponent could make an all-in play here, evoking Fury, pitching Ragavan, and then reanimating it to present a clock. And that's what they're going for. Still a pretty fast clock, 6 damage a turn. 
but they know our hands, so we don't have a great answer to the 3-3. Three, three. No opponent passes, so they're being patient. Maybe they have a Lightning Bolt, they want to combine with Fury to finish off Shieldred, or they want to just get back my Grief now to take Shieldred, which also makes sense. Alright, so now it's only a 3-powered creature instead of a 3-powered Double Strike. Fatal Push, not the best answer, since we don't have Fetch Lands to enable Revolt. If we find Collective Brutality, however, we can answer Grief. Still happy to top deck Necrodominance or the One Ring, which are the types of cards that can break a game wide open. So we have a bit of time to draw out of it. Fable, we can answer the token at least. And Villas is missing a reanimate to go with it. Okay. If I top deck Dark Ritual, I'll be one mana short. Opponent had a few lands they could discard, so Fable doing work as usual. And yeah, if we fall too low, I wouldn't be able to reanimate a Villas. Although we're probably past that point already. Alright, Grief I can just cast. Wouldn't probably have some removal spells of their own in hand. And now at least if Grief dies, Fatal Push is enabled. I guess evoking it also would have worked. Blood Moon not doing a whole lot in this matchup. So we'll take the Fury, which they were close to hard casting. Also would have been pretty good with uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Now Grief attacks past Grief. So that problem is still not dealt with. And then next turn they can copy Grief, so still needs a good top deck. Collective Brutality, yeah, that definitely counts. So I can go after Grief or I can go after Reflection. And then at this point am I discarding Villas or keeping it in the hopes of still casting it with maybe a Dark Ritual in the future? If I take out Grief, then at least Reflection can't attack. So maybe I do take out the Grief here and then keep the Fatal Push... If I gain two, however, I would be at nine, so then I can still maybe reanimate Villas at the cost of eight life. So that's still kind of a consideration. And then just discard Villas. Maybe more realistic than going a land into Dark Ritual. So let's give minus two, minus two, and drain for two. Take out Grief, drain the opponent, discard Villas, and keep Fatal Push. So that if they kill Grief, I get to take out the Reflection and just play defense. So now if we top deck reanimate, we're maybe off to the races. Bowmasters, that's bad news, because they can copy it with a reflection, and it also stops me from comboing off with uh, Villas. So not what we wanted to see. Opponent not uh, damaging Grief, since they don't want to enable Revolt. March, a decent draw. Okay, so... I guess I'll wait for them to try and copy Bowmasters, and then we push Bowmasters and march the Reflection in response. Still leave Grief back to block the 1-1. One -one. Opponent trying to copy the army token. Okay. I guess we'll still march the Reflection for 3. I guess since they knew about Fatal Push, they weren't gonna copy the Bowmasters, but copying the army, it's just a 0-0, zero, zero, so it doesn't do much for them. And now Grief will respond, take out Bowmasters. Alright, this is our window to top deck a reanimate. Shieldred's not bad either. So, now do we want to attack? I think so. Opponent's at 8, so it's a pretty fast clock. Opponent does have the mana to hard cast Fury still, so that could be pretty good. Maybe a reason not to block the army. Croxa, that's also a good one, although they're a mana short of escaping it. And yeah, next turn they're still dead to an all-out attack. Wow, what a close game here against Rakdos. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we have Triple Villas Ritual Fatal Push. 
It's probably not gonna cut it. Now we're just a reanimate away from bringing back Villas. Yeah, I'll try it. One can go. And then I don't think I thought seize yet. Gigantha typically not a combo deck where we need to thought seize immediately. Although they could return the favor and then I might regret it. But yeah, if I top deck reanimate, I need to be able to thought seize my own Villas. So I'll just keep up Fatal Push for now. Opponents, some sort of energy deck. Soul Warden's not the biggest threat. So we'll hang on to Fatal Push for now. And then still gonna wait on Thought Seas. Although they could play in a Jani now. And Raptor also pretty good. And they hit a Lightning Bolt, so three damage. So we could push the Amped Raptor. If I draw Collective Brutality, I can take out their creature and discard Villas. So maybe I still wait. If I draw Necrodominance, then I can ritual it out to still have mana available. Although that might be a bit of a waste. So I could see just using the push on Raptor now to save myself some damage going forward. Another Villas is not our better draw. Even if I draw another Dark Ritual, we're pretty far from casting it. Although I guess one more land and a Ritual would do it. Now opponent casting Ragavan instead of dashing it. And another Raptor, so yeah. This kind of slower mid-range approach of accruing value is going to beat us if we don't come up with something powerful soon. At least Raptor found another Ragavan, so maybe they wanted to play Raptor first. Fatal push answers Ragavan at this point. Can't wait for them to attack. And I'm still not thought seizing, since again we could draw reanimate, although the door is starting to close since we're running out of life. Unstable amulets. Finds a land. Take three down to twelve. And there's reanimates. Alright. Well, let's go for it. Thought sees myself. Reanimates. I'll be very low, so they have a lightning bolt, I'm dead. And draw. And find not the best set of cards, no way to gain life is the main issue. I could push the opponent's Soul Warden and then reanimate it to maybe start gaining some life back. That's a potential thing we can do. I guess it beats not doing anything else. Yeah, because if I ritual out a Necrodominance, I don't have any life to spare. And keeping the rituals in hand could maybe help in a future turn. Maybe it's still worth casting here since I will draw another card of Villas when I lose a life to reanimate. Alright, although now I do die to anything off Amulet as well. So maybe this wasn't worth it after all. Alright, let's just pass. And then hope they find another land with Amulet pretty much. If they play a creature at least we gain life. Flage, yeah, that's three damage. So we gain one, but lose three. And sadly, we don't get to see the cards of Villas before the game's over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's got potential. If we draw Villas, we could reanimate it. But we also have kind of the Grief backup plan and reanimate on Grief. And then hopefully Necrodominance to pull ahead. Although it's unclear whether we want to... Uh, play Grief on turn one. Depends on the matchup. And of course our opponent could also return the favor. All right, draw Shieldred, which is good with Necrodominance. If I Grief, our opponent could maybe cast a Brainstorm in response to hide some of their better cards. If they're on a Show and Tell deck, then I might still have a turn before they combo. So it is reasonable to just pass, but I could also see just Griefing them now and maybe reanimating the Grief which is maybe a little safer. 
So let me grief. I want to say pitching grief, keeping the collective brutality as something that doesn't require me to discard an extra card. And then I have the option of reanimate on grief if needed. This way, if we top deck Villas, I still am able to maybe reanimate it. I see Flare of Denial and then double Ripples, so it's a self mill deck of sorts. So the Flare I could take with a Collective Brutality next turn, unless they like instantly mill a Narco Amoeba, but that's probably not going to happen next turn. So yeah, maybe I can take the Ripples for now. And then reanimate, bring back Grief to take the second Ripples, and then our opponent doesn't have any self mill engine in play anymore. And then Brutality could take the Flare if we are worried about it to then clear a path for Necrodominance. But yeah, technically if they surveil a Narcomy bind to the graveyard, they would be able to cast Flare of Denial for free. Find another Grief instead. So can attack and then I think just Brutality discarding an instant or sorcery. And then we'll see if we need to grief them as well. Opponent with a Colosseum, which they're not too far from sacrificing, but for now we can pass it back. So this would draw them three and then discard three. So a good way to maybe set up their graveyard as well. I'm just waiting for a third lanes, and there we have it. So we'll attack. Could play the extra save by griefing them to check for another counter spell, but that seems like a bit of a waste. So we'll just Necrodominance, can draw, let's say, five cards here. We'll have to discard to hand size a little bit. And then I just want a fourth land, don't really need too many more. And then I can keep Thoughtseize to pitch it to Grief potentially. Or to a March. So the plan might be to Grief, check out if the coast is clear, and then play Shieldred in the same turn. Could also just cast Grief, but getting Shieldred down is a priority. Yeah, opponent just casting the Creeping Chill. So yeah, their self-mill plan hasn't really come together. And then now we can just cast Shieldred, no need to check for a counterspell. Attack. And then I can draw pretty much as many cards as I want here, since we'll gain two for every card we draw. Just have to watch out that our opponent doesn't suddenly mill us out, but uh, sure, we'll pay seven. Since unlike the other Necro enchantment, this is actual card draw, so it does trigger shield roots, and yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Can uh, keep some black cards in hand to power up our march, but uh, just with shield root alone, we have a pretty fast clock. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a reasonable hand. Turn one, unless we need to push a Ragavan, we can have a look with Thoughtseize. Could also keep Thoughtseize to maybe take our own Villas. Ooh, a Leyline of Sanctity, so yeah, I guess I wouldn't be Thoughtseizing my opponent now. Opponent on the uh, show and tell combo, it seems. As we draw another Reanimate. So I could Thoughtseize myself now, or I could wait a turn in case I draw Villas. If I don't Thoughtseize and my opponent Thoughtseizes me next turn, they might take my own Thoughtseize, so I can't Thoughtseize my own Shieldred, uh, since we have Redundant Reanimate. But I think it's still worth it to wait, since I don't need the extra mana next turn. And if I do top deck Villas, I may regret going for Shieldred. Alright, so... Plans a go. So if I can't thought seize you, I'll thought seize myself. But we could already die to show and tell combo here. Demonic Tutor is probably gonna either find an answer or assemble the combo more likely since they know about the secondary animate. So destroying shield roots not super helpful. Ooh, a Necrodominance, that's nice. So attack. And then I could draw 15 cards here. Just to find something that's relevant in the matchup. up 
opponent just surveilling. But our opponent probably has had a chance to grab show and tell or maybe an Atraxa to put in play. And I'm tapped out here, so... Still gonna draw 15, because I can. Gain as much life as possible. And then... Keep five cards. So what do we like? Can I ritual out Villas? I only have the one dark ritual. The one ring could be useful. So maybe keep one ring. March. A grief I can cast just as a 3-2 menace. Not incredibly impactful. Still probably keep ritual, reanimate Villas. And that's five cards. All right. Could have also kept a land to cast a one ring, but we still could use Dark Ritual. And now Villas or the one ring. So if our opponent combos off and wins with Approach, they're not going to target us, so the one ring doesn't really help. So I guess we may as well put Villas in play while we have the chance. Alright, so there's Omniscience. Well, let's see what our opponent can come up with. Atraxa. That's likely going to find the win here. So yeah, Leyline in your opener is a good way to beat these black discard decks. Although we were close to doing something powerful ourselves. So yeah, between Dig Through Time and Assemble, I imagine they can find their Mastermind's Acquisition to then get Approach. And win from there. They could also just cast the Bowmasters if they're running it to win the game, since we have a Villas out, so damaging us means we draw, which means we take more damage, etc. But yeah, opponent found the approach, cast approach, and then they just need a way to fetch it up again, assemble, and we'll do it. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have... A hand that's got potential. I reanimate Demonic Tutor, Dark Ritual. Don't quite have Villas or a way to discard Villas. Although we could do other powerful things. Definitely gonna keep. Question is, what's the best we can do here? Turn 1 Ritual Tutor. Can get a 1-drop and cast it, but probably can do better than reanimate. So maybe we just set up for a turn 2 Shieldred. Or I can Grief. And then reanimate Grief, and then I guess pitching Demonic Tutor, and then just cast turn two Shieldreds after double griefing them. And that's probably good enough. So, sorry Demonic Tutor. We were close to maybe setting up a Villas reanimate, but not quite. Opponents got their own reanimate. So this is the uh, red-black Underworld Breach kind of storm deck. So what's most threatening? Maybe the Channeler and then the Reanimates. And then they don't have any interaction for my turn to Shieldred. Tendrils doesn't do much until they're actually going off. And just hope they didn't top deck anything relevant. Necrodominance could be great too. But Shieldred's the priority. And then we're just aligned away from Necrodominance, which can then draw me all the cards I want. Mishra's Bobble's fine. That's two more life loss from Shieldred. But our opponent needs to try and assemble some sort of combo. Stitcher Supplier, Sacrifice to Diabolic Intent, can start filling the Graveyard. And then they can maybe find an Underworld Breach to combo off. Villas is not doing a whole lot for me. But we still have a very fast clock. Bones at 3. And I don't really see them comboing from this position. Alright, so we get to see this Mono Black Villas Necrodominance deck in action. 
And uh, yeah, reanimating Villas certainly comes up, but maybe doesn't happen as often as I would like. And there's always the risk of an opposing Bowmasters just killing you on the spot. So I wouldn't recommend it as a very competitive choice, but the rest of the deck with Shieldred, Necrodominance, One Ring remains a powerful engine you can build around, and then you can easily replace Villas with something else to still complement the reanimation package. You could play the uh, Troll of Casa Doom, for instance, which you can swamp cycle and then reanimate as a pretty fast clock, or you could add some other win conditions or interactive spells. So while I wouldn't recommend this exact list, I think a shell with Necrodominance and Shield Root is worth exploring. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.